This boy and girl coming home from school look quite content with life. And why not? They're looking forward to an important date, dinner at home with the family. What's the matter? Doesn't that sound exciting to you? Well, to them, it's a special occasion, as it has been ever since they sat down to dinner in high chairs. Why should they feel that way about something you take so completely for granted? Well, let's see if we can find out. First of all, daughter has changed from school clothes to something more festive. Dressing a little makes her feel and consequently look more charming. Even the table takes on a special air. Mother, too, changes from her daytime clothes. The women of this family seem to feel that they owe it to the men of the family to look relaxed, rested, and attractive at dinner time. Brother is spending an hour before dinner catching up on his homework. He has plans evening. Perhaps that explains the telephone call. But he won't spend a lot of time on the phone either. When there are several members of the family to be considered, it is not a good idea for one member to monopolize the phone. And it is never good to allow telephone conversations to interfere with studies. Hmm, is it that late? Dad will be here any minute. Better tell Mother she's needed in the kitchen. Brother notices the time and realizes that he must put things in order and clean himself up in time for dinner. Hello there. Junior is always in a hurry, particularly for dinner. But first there's a cleanup job to do on this young man. Brother takes it upon himself to help share Junior's responsibility for keeping their room in good order and keeping Junior in good order, too. Punctuality is stressed in this household. By that I mean hair is combed and faces and hands scrubbed before the boys come to the table so they won't delay the meal. Now, mother and daughter put the finishing touches on the dinner. Father, too, looks forward to this date with the family. He has had a hard day at the office, and in his briefcase are some contracts which must be looked over tonight. But in the meantime, he will relax at dinner with those he loves. A simple centerpiece made from some flowers which grow in the backyard is another of daughter's contributions to the dinner. But it takes up a little too much room, so she moves it to the sideboard. These boys greet their dad as though they are genuinely glad to see him as though they had really missed being away from him during the day and are anxious to talk to him. This is the time for pleasant discussion in a thoroughly relaxed mood. They don't pick this time of the day to spring unpleasant surprises on Dad. If they have disagreeable news, they'll postpone the discussion until another time. And this is no time to dun father for a raise in your allowance, new clothes, or argue about other financial matters. Ah, dinner time. Yes, Mother, Junior remembered to clean up. Brother seats Junior. Then helps Mother to her chair as he would his best girl. Well, the dinner date has begun, and they're all happy about it. Many families throughout the country observe the custom of saying grace at mealtime. It is always treated with reverence and respect. Napkins on the lap, 
the family awaits service. They converse pleasantly while Dad serves. I said pleasantly, for that is the keynote at dinner time. It is not only good manners, but good sense. Pleasant, unemotional conversation helps digestion. Father serves mother first, then daughter, then the boys. Don't worry, fellas, you won't get left. Help cut your meat, Junior? Of course. By example, older children can teach younger ones good table manners. No one starts eating until father has served himself. Always wait for the hostess, in this case mother, to begin eating before you start. Let father and mother guide the conversational trend if they desire. After all, they made all this possible and may want to talk over their day with each other. Tell mother how good the food is. Maybe sis rates a compliment too. It makes them want to continue pleasing you. Well, all this is good general advice, but there are some specific don'ts. Maybe the family will demonstrate for us. Don't monopolize the conversation and go on and on without stopping. Nothing destroys the charm of a meal more quickly. To say that the rest of the group is bored would be a gross understatement. Don't discuss unpleasant topics such as gruesome sights or sounds or unpleasant occurrences. This is a time of pleasure, of charm and relaxation, remember? Don't make unkind comparisons about your stand of living. The dinner table is no place for discontent. It makes dad and mother uncomfortable and unhappy. Don't insult your brother or sister with offensive remarks about friends. Arguments, harsh words, mean tension and distress for everyone. Do remember simply this. Treat the other members of your family with the same respect and cordiality you would show your most treasured friend outside the family circle. This does not mean you should be stiff or formal. With your own family, you can relax. Be yourself. Just be sure it's your best self. This is better. Now things are on an even keel again. Now we're ready for dessert. Most families don't have maids, so mother needs help with the serving from the kitchen. Son says mother has done enough. Watch him play butler. The removal of dishes from the main course and the serving of dessert set the stage for the conclusion of a thoroughly pleasant meal. Do you begin to see now how a date with your family can be a truly special occasion? Do you know why brother and sister looked forward to the evening? When the dinner hour at home is treated with a certain amount of graciousness and ceremony, it can be memorable. There is no family so poor but that the evening meal can be eaten in an atmosphere of warmth and gentleness. There is no family so busy but that it can come together in the evening for a dinner date which will give its members something to look back upon with happiness all their days.